This is one of the tallest shoes I've ever run in. But at this point, we need to think about whether these race illegal shoes are just a gimmick or is there a reason why this shoe needs to be so big? This is the New Balance Super Comp Trainer. It's time to take it for a run. Eleven point two three miles with some repetitions at marathon effort, threshold effort, five k effort, and then a couple of strides during there for good measure, so I can get a sense of what this shoe is like at a variety of paces. I also took it for a longer run at fifteen point nine five miles at mostly easy pace on very very tired legs from a workout the day before, so I could really fully round out the testing on the New Balance. Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer. Now, before I give my thoughts on this shoe, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a shoe that New Balance sent to me for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for it. However, no one's paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So, with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer. First, let's go over some specs. I think the main headline spec is that it is a tall shoe, 47 millimeters of stack height in the heel. And yes, that does make it technically race illegal for road marathons, but really that only matters if you're trying to win prize money at a major marathon or other big city marathon kind of race. For us normies out there, it really just means it's a tall shoe. This shoe has an eight millimeter drop in terms of the heel to the forefoot. So in the forefoot, there is 39 millimeters of stack height. Now in that stack height, there's basically two things. You've got the foam itself, which is New Balance's fuel cell foam, which it's a premium foam. They use it in its race shoes and in its higher performance shoes. And there's also a carbon fiber plate. And you can actually see the carbon plate through the bottom of the shoe and what New Balance is calling the energy Mark. Also on the midsole is strategically placed strips of rubber to protect this fuel cell midsole foam from getting too chewed up. In the front, it's color matched, so it doesn't look like there's a ton of rubber, but there is a decent amount of coverage back here. And then you've got two of these kind of pink stretches of rubber to protect the sides or what are kind of these like side walls uh, of the midsole foam. There's even a little patch of rubber that's right in the front of the shoe in the forefoot that is not covering any foam, but is actually directly attached to the carbon fiber plate. Filming it up to the top, we've got a full knit upper that is very comfortable, very stretchy on top with not a lot of structure in the heel and just a little bit of padding back here to make things a little bit more comfortable and help keep the ankle in place. Now we've got a lot of shoe here and that's going to add up to a hefty amount of weight. The interesting thing here is that New Balance lists this shoe at 320 grams or about 11.3 ounces. But that seemed a little bit heavier than the shoe kind of felt because in hand, it doesn't feel as heavy as it looks. So I actually weighed this shoe myself. The only problem is I didn't weigh it until after my run today, that longer 15.95 mile run. And by the time I had gotten done on this hot summer day, this shoe came in super soaking wet. There was just a lot of sweat and also some water from grass that I had been running through. So soaking wet, this shoe for my size nine came in at 11.1 ounces. And now several hours later in the day, I went back to weigh it again and it's coming in at 10.7. So I'm thinking the actual weight is probably closer to something like a 10 and a half ounces for a US men's size nine. I'll update this later in the description after I let this shoe kind of air out a little bit dry out a little bit more and see if I can get a dry weight. So now with those specs out of the way, let's talk about what it was like to actually run in this shoe. Now, the first obvious thing is that it's a tall shoe and it felt like a tall er shoe. Did it feel like a 47 millimeter stack height shoe? Did it feel on foot as big as this shoe kind of looks? It didn't really feel that way at all. What I felt that this was a shoe that had a lot of cushion underfoot and a lot of comfortable squishiness. The other thing about it is because of the plate, it also stabilized the shoe. So like for its size, it was a very stable shoe and actually 
not even taking its excessive height into account, it still felt like a very stable shoe that was also squishy, a kind of rare combination that you only see in a handful of shoes that are able to kind of balance those two seemingly opposite sensations. This shoe manages to do it well. And I think that the way that they're doing that is with this Energy Arc. I actually thought it was more of kind of like a, look, you could see the carbon inside, kind of like a window into the technology, but there's a reason why this all exists and I think I understand it. So New Balance tells us that there's these two kind of like walls of foam that the plate kind of sits on. And as the plate compresses, as your foot hits the ground, it puts pressure on the heel or the back of the shoe and it compresses the foam that's back here. But because it's in this kind of like channel configuration rather than a big hunk of foam, I think it puts kind of like more relative pressure on each side of this foam. And then as a result, that kind of puts more kind of rebound potential into the foam. So when your foot starts to pick up off the ground, it really pops right at that point and you're getting a much bigger kind of bounce sensation if you're hitting say from like the midfoot back. Combine that with the fact that the carbon fiber plate is so aggressively curved, you get a nice little like heel pop plus roll and it makes for a nice bouncy sensation that also has a lot of stability because that plate curves so low to the ground. I think that's the main thing that low plate placement gives you is that it helps the shoe roll really well and also keeps the forefoot from getting too squishy. So even though the fuel cell foam and there's a lot of it in this forefoot is here, it's not like caving in on one side or the other depending on how your foot hits the ground. It's rolling through really nicely from one step to the next. Now, I think that's really different from the way that a lot of other carbon plated shoes kind of work. And then says that when we think about carbon and bending the carbon, you're thinking about like hitting it on the ground, curling up on your toes, curling that carbon. And then as your toe pushes off, that's when you're getting the lift. Here, I think because like the main like benefit of the shoe is from like midfoot strike and back, you're hitting the ground, bending the carbon almost backwards. And then as your foot starts to heel lift, that's when you're starting to get that carbon pop. So instead of having it at the end of the foot strike, uh, when you're doing the toe off in the kind of a traditional carbon plated racer, you're getting it a lot early in that gait cycle, give it a nice kind of bouncy sensation. So that's kind of like the main thing that I'm really experiencing in this shoe. And that sensation kind of changes depending on the pace that I'm putting the shoe in. So when I'm running at an easy pace, it's a surprisingly comfortable shoe to run in and that bounce is really pleasant. I'm able to kind of modify my natural tendency to run a little bit more forefoot and lean back a little bit into the shoe, stand a little bit more upright and get that nice bounce and roll. Bounce and roll, which makes it a very fun shoe to take for easy paces, even if the shoe makes me want to run a little bit faster than I maybe want to for my easy kind of efforts. When I pick up the pace a little bit more and get towards marathon effort, I'm still really feeling that bounce and roll, although that's when I'm starting to get a little bit more forefoot in my natural foot strike. At marathon effort, I'm still feeling like I have to adjust my foot strike just a little bit, not in a super annoying kind of way. It's not super aggressive, but in kind of in a positive reinforcement kind of way, like you're rewarded if you're hitting the shoe like as intended, right? Like very square in the midfoot. That's the kind of kind of feedback that I'm getting at that marathon effort. Picking up the speed even further and getting into those threshold paces. I thought threshold paces where the shoe was kind of the most awkward because that's where I'm like not quite in the midfoot and starting to edge a little bit more forefoot but still kind of hitting both. So some of that kind of like in betweenness that I was starting to feel at marathon pace really starts to rear its head at that threshold pace. And I just really didn't like it. I felt like that's where the shoe started to disagree with me a little bit more. The odd thing is, as I got even faster still, 5K pace and then mile pace is just kind of what I'm shooting for when I do strides, I felt like I was landing firmly in the forefoot. And that's where the shoe actually felt like a better than it did at say threshold efforts. Uh, and that's because I think that I wasn't kind of like fighting this, you know, trying to hit the midfoot and take advantage of the energy arc. I was really just getting the fuel cell and the low plate placement in the forefoot. I actually had a really nice quick rapid turnover, nice stability in terms of that forefoot landing. And while the shoe felt a little bit heavy, it was doing a surprisingly good job at those paces on the roads. Now, because the shoe is still 
a uh, very tall shoe and in the forefoot it's 39 millimeters of stack height i really wouldn't want to take it out for say like a track workout anything where it had any kind of sharp turns but if it's a, something where there's some very short changes of pace maybe you're doing some strides at the end of a long run this certainly is going to be a fun shoe to still be able to do that in as well so that's kind of the range of paces that i was able to experience in this shoe i felt like from the upper perspective it was really comfortable the whole time i love knit uppers and this was a comfortable pleasant shoe to be in even on a really hot day when sweat was collecting inside the shoe not because my foot was sweating so much but just because the rest of me was sweating so much and it was just kind of all draining into my feet it still felt like it was a very comfortable shoe no blisters or anything like that the one thing that did happen to me and i didn't really notice it until i went to put the shoes on a second time is that um this part right here right at the top of the front of the ankle um did have a little bit of staining to it. And I think that there was some chafing that happened from the first run. So uh, you might want to wear a little bit of a taller sock. I tend to gravitate towards no show or whatever the lowest cut sock is available from any brand. So you might want to go with something a little bit taller. I did go true to size in this shoe, which is by far the most common thing that I typically do in my shoes. Uh, and that is what I went with here. So with that kind of run experience now, talked about. Let's talk about whether I think these super tall shoes are a gimmick. And I feel like it's easy to kind of like go there and think that. And I think that the tempting thing for a lot of companies would to be like, all right, those are popular. They're headline grabbing. Uh, they're controversial to people too. People love to comment on them and talk about how much they want them or how much they hate them solely on stack height numbers. But I think that here, the really tall stack height makes a difference and i think it's all because of that energy arc so i feel like the really high height uh back here as it compresses with the high plate placement in the heel actually makes for a very nice popping sensation kind of in the back that kind of catapults you forward as your heel lifts off the ground that kind of needs some room to work that like needs a little bit of real estate for that travel to happen but I also think that might be a little bit of the limitation of this shoe uh, because of the fact that not everyone is a midfoot striker. And so if you're a little bit more of a forefoot striker, this shoe might not be for you. So I don't think this one is a gimmick, but I don't think that it's necessarily like the Adidas Primex competitor that I was initially hoping that it would be when they paired the fuel cell foam with a carbon fiber plate in a super high stack height configuration. But on the other hand, it's not really like a Bondi X, which I would consider like on the other end of this kind of like tall, super cushioned, carbon plated, but not yet a premium flagship racer kind of category. It's a very, very strange, small sub niche. But like if the Bondi X is going to be on their side, I don't think that this New Balance Super Comp Trainer is on this side of the spectrum either. I think it's probably like in the middle, probably closer towards Primex than Bondi X if you want to kind of think of it that way. Another shoe that it reminds me of is the Puma DV8, just the regular DV8 that had the nitro foam with the carbon fiber plate in it, not the Elite version. Um, so it kind of reminds me of that, but in a much bouncier, much more exciting, much livelier kind of version of that as well. So uh, for those of you that are looking for something that you want to take for a majority of your runs and maybe like the standard daily trainers aren't doing it for you and the kind of like the standard max cushion shoes might be a little bit heavier and not quite as exciting as you want. This might be exactly the shoe that you're looking for. The other person that I think that shoe could be absolutely fantastic for is for those marathoners that are out there that are looking for a carbon plated option, something that they can help get the most out of themselves on race day and want something that's gonna be a little bit more comfort oriented than necessarily pure speed oriented. I think that the Super Comp Trainer is gonna work really well for you too. So those are my thoughts on the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs. Now we'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?